Hi, if you don't know what an RA is, honestly, good for you. I'm filming a video that I've wanted to film for the longest time. For the longest time. For anybody who doesn't know, I was an RA at my college for a year and a half before I abruptly quit. For those of you who don't even know what an RA is, um, an RA stands for a restless asshole. I'm just kidding. It's rambunctious asshole. RA stands for resident assistant. Essentially, they just help out in like the dorms, the res halls that we had to call them. You basically go to them for all your problems. Sometimes they could be called narcs because they're supposed to bust people for, you know, you know. But being an RA, there's just a lot more to it and we're usually not allowed to talk about it because we're literally binded to a contract that our university makes us sign and it's essentially just us signing our life away and we don't even know it and we're all like 19 and we're like, yeah, free housing. And then it's like, oh, they kind of own you now. When I started my YouTube channel, I just became an RA and I loved it. I was bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, had no idea what was going on, but I loved everything about it. And then it quickly uh, turned into something that it was not supposed to be. But that's besides the point. I'm no longer an RA. I quit this last December. Great decision. When I was an RA, I was like, oh my god, I wish I could make a video talking about these things because they're so funny and interesting and like crazy, but I can't because I signed my life away a few months ago. And then time went on and then I quit and I was like, mm, maybe like too soon. Maybe I really shouldn't talk about it yet. And then school shut down because of the virus. What are they gonna do to me now? I'm not even in the vicinity of the school. What are they gonna do, fire me? They can't, for legal reasons. Uh, I am playing a character. I am, what? I have never been an RA. I don't even attend a university. My name, it's, it's not even my name. Today I am sharing my RA stories that I was literally not allowed to tell while I was an RA. However, my stories may not be as juicy as, I don't know, me sleeping with a supervisor or something. Um, that shit does happen. Not at my school, though. With that being said, let's talk about the things that I have never talked about before. Keep in mind, I had freshmen. I had an all-freshman floor. At my first meeting, I was, like, shitting myself. Like, I was so excited, but I was so nervous because a lot of those people were the same age as me because I am, like, young for my year or whatever. So I'm, like, telling them, like, hey, guys, we're gonna be a happy big family. And then one girl looks at me and she's like, somebody told me that you go by Nikki Nasty. And I'm like, oh, so you stalked my Instagram. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to say, lie? I was like, yeah, I go by Nikki Nasty. Yes, it sounds like a porn name. Yes, I am your RA. It's moving day. We're working, we're doing our thing. I'm like giving out key packets left and right. I learned very quickly that I don't do well in like fast paced jobs. Another reason why I probably quit Babolte, but anyway. So I remember this girl comes up to me and she asked me for her key. And I just like remembered her so distinctly because she had this characteristic to her that I can't name, but she had this characteristic to her that was just very defining. And I was like, okay, I'm on to you, all right? So we're working and then all of a sudden the fire alarm goes on. I don't know, someone probably got stuck in the elevator or like something like that, something, you know, something, not that big of a deal. Until they're like, no, it's no, it's real. And then water starts pouring out of the side of the building, like from the windows, um, because there was a fire on move-in day. In my building, this is proof, once again, that I am indeed psychic. I have this vision and I looked at my friend and I said, I know exactly what happened. Family moved their child into their room. They placed something on the stove. They were checking the stove to see if it works and they accidentally left it on and it caught on fire. I just know it. I remember this family coming up to me and asking me for directions or something and I was like, you guys are sketchy. You guys are sketchy and you guys are the same people who came up to me before. I remember this person, you had that defining characteristic, you started the fire. I just felt it, I didn't say that, but I felt it in me. About like an hour later, my supervisor pulls us all to the side and he was like, all right, there was a fire. This family moved their daughter into their room. They were checking to see if the stove worked. They placed something on top, it caught on fire. And it is this person. And it was the person that I guessed that it was. Anyway, I'm psychic. Whew. 
Ooh, I hope I don't get in trouble. That would be really bad. <laughs> if you guys have any family members that are lawyers, leave them in the comments below. <laughs> that first week, me being an RA, fire aside, uh, second week of being an RA, I noticed that this like older man was walking in our hallway frequently. Was a little bit confused, didn't really know who this guy was. I was kind of like nervous to like stop him and be like, halt. Who are you and why are you so old? Like, you don't do that, you know what I mean? So I had like all my residents fill out like roommate success plans and they had to like, you know, agree on stuff. Like, hey, is it cool if I have sex with someone while you're in the room and then they have to sign a contract and be like, no, that is not okay or yes, that is okay. And trust me, some people said, yes, it is okay. Yeah, anyway, so this guy is like, hey, my roommate and I didn't fill it out, but he said that he'll be stopping by your room later on tonight. I was like, cool, didn't meet him yet, but I'm excited to meet him. So it's like 10 p.m. I get a knock at my door, me being like this brand new RA. I'm like, oh my God, hello. I open the door and I like look up and it is the grown ass man. And I was like, hi, I'm telling you, this man is jacked. Like he is just buff, huge, large and in charge, okay? And he's like, hey, I'm your new resident. Like, I heard I have to fill stuff out. I was like, yes. So I asked him if he could like prop the door open while I like run to my desk to go get like the paper and a pen. And in the meantime, that it took me to like walk to the other side of the room and I like turn around and the door is like closing behind this man. And I was like, no, no, stop that. Don't, um, I'm scared of men, okay? That's what I'm trying to say, I'm scared of men. Turns out this dude was in the military prior, so that's why he is large and in charge and a little bit older than the rest of the freshmen. Whatever, I'm like, all right, dude. I'm like explaining to him like all the rules. I'm like, okay, so we have to be quiet after 10 p.m. And he's like, all right, so like, can I have alcohol? And I was like, no. What if I'm 24? And I was like, no, you cannot have alcohol, but also how do I, a 19 year old girl, tell this man, no, you cannot have alcohol. I think I was literally still 18. Anyway, that was just like a very awkward interaction. Every single interaction I had with this man was so uncomfortable and awkward. And then later on in the year, he kept messaging me and being like, hey, if the kids are misbehaving, just let me know. Like, I don't mind having to like put them in their place. I was like, dude, I got trained for this. You serve the country, now let me serve my floor. I don't need you. But I did ask him to set a few people straight. I'm just kidding, I did not do that. <laughs> I'm like looking at my list of things and they're all like semi-crazy and chaotic in their own ways that I don't know which one to do next. So one time I almost lost my job because I took someone to the hospital. So essentially what RAs have to do, this is kind of like a universal thing, they have to be on duty. And what being on duty means is that you pick up the cell phone, it's usually like a little flip phone, and you have to hold it between like 6 p.m. until like 8 a.m. the next day. And you have your own shifts, whatever. There's usually a primary person and then there's a backup one. So I was on backup, which is called secondary. I picked up the phone like a couple hours early because I wanted to do my homework in my room. Get a knock at my door, it's one of my residents and she's like, how bad do I have to be bleeding for me to go to the hospital? I was like, I don't know, are you bleeding right now? She's like, yeah. And she like unwraps this towel and she's just heavily bleeding, like bleeding so bad. And she's a small girl. So I let her come inside and whatever. And then she starts being like very faint. And I was like, are you okay? She's like, no, I'm gonna pass out. And I was like, oh my God. So I like help her to my chair and she's like sweating and she's about to pass out. Things are just not good, okay? I need to call 911 because you are not well. And she's like, no, I can't afford an ambulance because guess what, we're in America. I was so conflicted in that moment because I knew that the right thing to do was to call an ambulance for her because we didn't really have any other mode of transportation. But I knew that it wouldn't be fair to put this girl into a financial situation that she could not handle. Um, So I was kind of conflicted for a second. So you have like an emergency number that RAs can call, which is basically like the supervisor on duty that you can just give a ring to. So I'm quickly like dialing the number. I call and uh, it no one answers at all. And I start panicking at this point because this girl's faint. She's passing out in my chair. She's sweating. And I was like, okay, we need to do something. And she was like, well, can I take like an Uber? You can take an Uber to the hospital. And then she asked me if it's okay if I came with her because I don't want to put this girl alone and do a Lyft or an Uber. So we're on our way to the hospital, whatever. We're in the emergency room. And I decided to like call up that supervisor again to see if he had anything to say. So I call and I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm at the hospital. I just called earlier because I didn't know what to do. And he's like, you're where? And I was like, the hospital? He's like, you made a big mistake. You cannot be there right now. You need to go back to campus. 
immediately. And I was like, okay, well, I didn't know I did anything wrong. So I did three things wrong, apparently. First of all was leaving campus with the secondary duty phone. I was not supposed to be in this Uber or Lyft with this girl because if the Uber or Lyft got into a car accident, it would have been my fault. Also, I was supposed to call an ambulance for her. So I did three things wrong and I almost lost my job because I tried to help a resident instead of, uh, you know, that person answering the phone and helping me out and what to do. <laughs> but basically we had to do like programs, like tabling events to just get like people interested in stuff. So one of my first ideas was to do this program where we ordered all these succulents. And then I also had the idea that we order a shit ton of condoms. And then we had a program called Succulents and Safe Sex. It was a hit, people were lined up, people got free succulents and free condoms. What more could you ask for? And I really, really wanted to call the program Safe Suck, uh, but I was not allowed. One time this guy forced me and my friend to carve pumpkins, even though that we said that we didn't want to and he forced us to, he was a resident. He made us just really uncomfortable, just consistently made a lot of really, really weird comments. So then I was found out that later that year, he had fish in his room and another RA found that out. And so they told him like, you need to get these fish out of the room. And he's like, okay, well, what if they're an emotional support animal? And they're like, okay, that's fine, but you need to get it registered as that by this date. And if you don't, then you can't have them. And he didn't get them registered by that date. Date, so he froze his fish because anyway so one of the most common things that RAs have to do is bust people and like their rooms for smoking partying drinking whatever I found it very annoying when people would smoke in the hallway just because it made the entire hallway smell like it it's decriminalized in Philadelphia if you're gonna do it just go do it somewhere else you know what I mean I didn't like that part of the job I did not like doing that I did not like busting people I did it as little as possible and if I'm being completely honest I stopped busting people after a certain amount of time because there comes a point where you're like I can't keep doing this. I can't do this every single night where I'm gonna try and stop people from smoking weed. They're gonna do it anyway, you know what I mean? So yeah, I was a bad RA for a period of time because I was just like, what am I gonna do? So I remember it was like my second time ever just knocking on someone's door and I would just give them warnings, honestly. But I knock on this kid's door and he's taking forever to open up. Like obviously just like shifting stuff in there, like spraying Febreze. I was like, all right, this dude is clearly smoking in here, whatever. He opens the door and his friend is like perfectly in the middle of the room reading the Bible while the entire room is just like a complete mess and it reeks. And he's like, nah, dude, if I'm being honest with you, I did smoke outside, but I did not smoke in here. You know what I mean? We're just chilling. We're not doing anything. And I was like, listen, I'm not stupid. I'm not dumb. Don't do it again. We also had to do like room inspections, make sure that everything was like safe and good and that there weren't like drugs. And so nothing is allowed to touch the ceiling. And one of the RAs messages the group chat and they're like, well, is this considered touching the ceiling? Cause it is like strapped to the ceiling. Um, it was a stripper pole. Somebody had a pole in their dorm room. Honestly, I think that's really cool. Make your money, great exercise but she did have to take it down because it was touching the ceiling. Not my call. So on the very last day that all the freshmen were moving out of their rooms, uh, this one girl was like very last minute packing. She was gonna miss her flight. Like things were just not good, you know what I mean? And so she had an emotional support cat. And so the cat needed to get drugged to be able to go on a flight. And it was prescribed by like the vet and everything. But um, I was asked to hold the cat down so that she could drug the cat. That wasn't in my job description. And like I was happy because I got to touch the cat. Sad because I didn't want to do that. But I'm just... I'm just saying I could probably add that to my resume. Professional cat holder downer. Uh, one time I was putting up little Valentine's Day cards on all my residents' doors because I would do cute stuff like that and like give them candy and everything. And one of my residents comes up to me and it was like obviously after I started my YouTube channel and she was like, Nicole, I really like your videos. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. Like that means so much to me. She's like, yeah, I'm going to the bar after this. And I was like, you're 18 and I'm your RA. And she was like, oh my God, you're my RA. She was drunk at this point. So it was just funny. I didn't do anything. There's nothing I can do. I don't want to do anything. So my building was like categorized as like the worst building on campus, like whatever. I love living there, but 
it, you know. So this guy was moving into the building and was moving in like to an empty room with like a roommate and everything. And he was there for approximately like 25 minutes before he decided he hated the room, he hated the building. He was like, I am not gonna live here. And uh, he made sure to drop by my DMs and was like, hey, thanks for helping me move in, but uh, I'm moving out now. So uh, if you ever wanna chill or hang out or talk or anything, just don't be afraid to hit me up, you know? I was like your mother for like a hot second. This is really weird. There were some creepy dudes like that from like time to time. Like this one guy, um, I would say hi to him because that's the nice thing that RAs do is that they say hello to other residents. He wasn't mine, but he was from a different floor. And uh, I don't know what possessed him to do this, but then he went on my Instagram and only liked the photo of me in my bikini that was taken like half a year ago. Um, I did not like that. That was not cool. <laughs> and then probably the only exciting thing that happened with residents last semester. So me and my friends, Moraine and Jake, we decided let's make monkey bread one night, okay? We would just do this thing where we would bake and watch like YouTube on TV and it was just a really fun, good time. So we're baking, having a blast. Moraine's on duty, she gets a call. Peace, see ya, let us know if you need anything. So then she calls me and she's like, Nicole, I'm being dead serious. There is like a 60 person party happening in the lounge on the second floor. You have to come. And at the time when she called me, Jake and I were dealing with a small little kitchen fire that was happening in our oven because the monkey bread spilled over. We're like, we can't, we can't really come right now. And she's like, Nicole, I'm being dead serious. And I was like, there's no way that there's 60 people there. Um, no, there was 60 people. It was really bad. Somehow these people thought that it would be a good idea to have a, a party with alcohol, an alcohol party um, in a dorm building with over 60 people there. I don't even know how they all got in there. And so then Jake and I are like, all right, we gotta go. We gotta go help her out, whatever. The police are there, different supervisors are there. It's crazy. And Jake and I are just standing there and we're like, what do we even do? And this one girl inebriated goes up to Jake and she's like, are they gonna take our IDs? Like what's gonna happen? Like, I, I don't, I'm under 21. Like what's gonna happen to me? And Jake is just like, oh, Sweetie, I am the wrong person to ask. <laughs> I'm an RA. <laughs> and then everything ended in December because the department asked me to stop making YouTube videos if I wanted to continue being an RA. So I quit. Just kidding. I quit because I told them that I And they were like, No, a lot of things happened that led me to quitting, but I get so many DMs and comments from people asking if I still recommend becoming an RA. Absolutely, like such an amazing decision, such a good financial decision, such a fun experience. Like one of the best decisions I made while going to school, you know, theoretically, if I was an RA, cause I'm, I wasn't ever an RA, this is just a character, remember? Uh, I was just in a very unique situation, which led me to quitting. So that situation will most likely never ever happen to you. So yes, I absolutely recommend it. If you wanna become an RA, definitely become an RA. It's so worth it. And then you get to have like a bunch of fun stories like I just had. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed these stories. I hope that they were somewhat entertaining. I don't even know what just happened for like the last hour of me filming, if I'm being completely honest. If you were one of my old residents, I love you. I miss you. You were the best. So, and yeah, if you're an RA, leave your funny stories down below if you care to. If you are going to be an RA this fall, you're gonna have a blast. Best of luck. And yeah, honestly, I miss those times a lot. They were so much fun, but all good things must come to an end. Speaking of an end, we are at the end of this video. What a smooth transition. If you want to subscribe, you can subscribe. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can because we're almost at 150,000 subscribers. And if you want to follow me on my other social media, it's all linked down below, but it's just at Nicole Raffi. And if you want to follow me on my TikTok, I don't know why you would, but you can. It's at Nikki Nasty. I am going to go now and I am going to start Googling some attorneys. So thanks for watching. Good night. It's literally 1 a.m. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>